see, everything we hear, and even everything we feel is associated with electrical activity in our brain. Electroencephalogram, or EEG, records this electrical activity using electrodes that are placed at different locations on the scalp of a subject. So what we have is a signal for each location evolving over time. Now, this signal looks really messy, and we cannot really understand what's going on. But this signal can be decomposed in different components, called brain waves. Each brain wave is associated to a specific state of mind. The slow waves or delta waves occur during deep sleep. Delta waves occur when we are daydreaming or spacing out. <laughs> Alpha waves occur when we are meditating, and the most fast and the fastest waves, beta waves, occur when our minds are actually stimulated or challenged. For example, we are smelling a flower, or we are doing some math, or we are giving a presentation. <laughs> from that messy signal what's actually going on and which of these components are the most significant. Well, we can look at the spectral density. The spectral density is a tool that shows in a clear way which components are present and which ones are the most powerful. And spectral density are largely used in neuroscience. For example, they are used to monitor patients that are recovering from a stroke or to detect fatigue for people like astronauts. The problem is, in all these applications, we don't know the true spectral density, and we need to estimate it. The closest thing that we have to the spectral density is the periodogram. We can have the periodogram with a transformation directly from the data. But the periodogram is not a good estimator. It's really noisy, and it doesn't get better and the number of data as the number of data increases. So what we do is place a sophisticated statistical model on the periodogram to get reliable estimates of the spectral density. But remember, we have multiple locations, and each location has its own spectral density. Also, all these, wave, all these brain waves can be present simultaneously in different locations of the brain. So there are other methods out there for one single spectral density. The main advantage of our method is that it estimates these spectral densities simultaneously. In particular, while estimating one single spectral density in, in one channel, in one location, we borrow strength, we borrow information from all the other locations. And in this way, we can model the brain activity as a whole. And we are confident that this will provide new insights for future research in neuroscience. <laughs>